mono black stompy mono black prison definitely a thing with like helm of obedience and Leyline of the void and all that nonsense red stompy red prison decks all over the place blood moon is awesome green stompy you occasionally see some dinosaur stompy white stompy yeah sure get those soldiers in there get those initiative creatures in there but what about the blue stompy where are the blue prison decks Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben you here for another legacy video and today I want to talk some prison theory for a few minutes before we get going. So in legacy when we start talking about prison decks we are looking at decks that are looking to grind the game to a halt with some sort of lock piece. And fundamentally, by legacy standards, that usually means using fast mana from artifacts, ancient tombs, city of traders, or some combination thereof to power out cards like Chalice of the Void and Trinisphere. And I, I love these style of decks. I, I think they're a lot of fun. But why is it that you don't see very many blue prison decks in particular? And I think the easiest place to start here is by talking about the appeal that exists in other colors for creating a prison deck list. And just to quickly like delineate two terms, I'm going to use prison and stompy as different words today. They have some degree of overlap. And when I'm referring to prison decks, I'm talking about lock pieces and dragging the game on for a long time. And when I am referring to stompy decks, I'm going to refer to decks that are looking to play a lock piece and then close the game quickly. Uh, we could really get into the weeds of that, but this deck deck is already going to go pretty deep. I think many other colors in Legacy have better things that make it appealing to make prison strategies in those colors. So for example, when you dip into red, you have the I win button in the form of Blood Moon that is literally just three mana, lock someone out of the game. But when we start looking at blue lock pieces, they are much clunkier and much more situational, with stasis being a great example of that. That can do a lot of damage for two mana, but you have to jump through a ton of hoops to make this work. Or alternatively, you start looking at things that deny card draw, like Hullbreaker, or sorry, Hull Breacher and Narset, but both of these things are fragile. Hullbreacher dies to a stiff breeze, and Narset can be attacked. Both of these end up being kind of weak lock pieces on their own, and they often require something like Echo of Eons to help make them good. While Ancient Tomb is very commonly played alongside blue cards, it is usually in more of a stompy shell where you are playing things like Patchwork Engineer, Kappa Cannoneer, and things of that general nature off this Ancient Tomb. Or alternatively, you have some sort of combo finish like Painter, Servant, and Grindstone. So I was tasked with putting together something that resembles a blue prison list. And I think that's a fun challenge. But fundamentally, as I was building myself, I was asking like, why am I doing this? Like, what is the appeal of being in this color? And that is kind of where I kept bashing my head against the wall again and again and again and again and again. And a lot of the deck lists that I looked at in research were essentially variants of 8-cast or variants of Tesserator or had Karn. And I, I think they all had the same general problem of like they were just like slow or they were clunky. And while I could put together a prison deck that had like a bunch of ensnaring bridges and trinospheres and chalices, the ways that I like was coming up with to win the game afterwards were like attack with a bunch of thopters that were uh, honestly kind of unsatisfying. So let's take a look at what I put together. Fundamentally, I couldn't quite come up with a way to build just like an awesome blue prison deck list that I thought could just like consistently lock people out every, every round. 
everything that I was coming up with was just a worse version of some other existing deck. So Back to Basics was a card that I started brewing with very early on during this challenge. And it had some fundamental problems. I was able to build blue prison decks that had like 12 basic islands in them. But when I was thinking about finishers, every time my mind was just coming back to Urza's Saga. And every time I built this deck list, I also felt like I needed Ancient Tomb. And Seed of the Synod was one of those things that I really needed to enable Mox Opal and some of the other stuff that I'm going to talk about in a minute. And fundamentally, what I decided was that I was going to play prison elements as tempo pieces rather than planning on locking my opponent out forever. So a lot of times when a deck runs back to basics, you're doing it because you are playing entirely basics and like it is or very close to it and is just like minimally going to impact you. Whereas today I am going to play this as like time walk. My goal is to get a win condition into play, like a Kappa Cannoneer or a Patchwork Automaton, and then use back to basics as like my fireball, my time walk that'll that get that lets these things attack again. And when I do play this out early, I am going to try to rely on artifact mana and some card recursion and card draw that I'll talk about in just a second to make it so that my back to basics is not fully symmetrical. And this is this is a little awkward in terms of deck building, but I hope it ends up doing okay. So the attraction for blue to me here is actually card advantage. So my goal is to use fast mana to accelerate out chalices, threats, and then slam back to basics. And in the times where that doesn't work, I want to cast a whole bunch of baubles from the graveyard with Emery, or use a call Pakal to bury my opponents in cards. This is something that I've been really impressed with. Uh, and actually, Isaac asked me to try and break this card. So uh, Isaac, we're gonna we're gonna try to do a two for one today and do something that resembles blue prison and breaking a call Pakal at the same time. Don't worry, we'll use this to fund another dealer's uh, choice donation deck list as well. Not trying to get a two for one for free. Some other things I was thinking about during deck building. One of my drafts had four more basic islands and just had a much higher land count. And then I started thinking about like math behind Mox Opal hits, mock, like math behind Emery hits, and a call per call card advantage. And I decided I wanted more artifacts to kind of hit and make the deck work. We are sort of prison tempo here rather than true prison. Because I, I don't think the true prison works out super well. Because like ensnaring bridge would be the other lock piece that I want, but like ensnaring bridge just ends up playing so poorly with most of the things that I would want to use as finishers. And if I wasn't going this artifact route, I would probably be going some sort of cantrip route with Merktide Regent, and I was just running into the same problem. At a fundamental level, if I go the blue prison route that involves Narset and Hull, Bre Ugh. Hull Breacher, I've been playing CEDH, Hull Breaker Horror is a thing there. If I go the route that involves Hull Breacher and Echo of Eons, then we start running into Bowmasters being 40% of the format, just absolutely punishing my fundamental deck design. And like we've seen that recently on the channel. And if we can try to to some extent play around Bowmasters, we should. Now, are we still gonna run into some Bowmasters issues with this deck? Yeah, absolutely. If I cut four lands to play four bobbles to churn through my deck, we are gonna run into some problems, but we're not on the thought casts and thought monitors here. And a call per call is not a draw, it is another kind of selection. So that at least plays around Bowmasters. We have a small Urza Saga package that is supplemented by the sideboard. In trying to fit this back to basic stuff into the deck list, I have to kind of let something go, and an expanded Urza's Saga package was part of that. I just noticed that I don't have a Pithing Needle in the 75, so we're just gonna do that real quick. 
In terms of sideboard considerations, it is possible that some number of these should just be Fairy Macabs instead of Tormod Script. I'm going to try to lean into the artifact synergy pretty hard today. And kind of staying true to the prison roots here, for the combo matchups in particular, I am going to throw Trinisphere out here. This was something that started in the main deck with my brewing, but when I hit the second playset of Bobbles, I, I just ultimately decided that Trinisphere in game one didn't really make sense anymore, and I moved those to the sideboard. I still think they are going to be very good when they are good. I just don't know how reliable it's actually going to be long term. So I think this is where I end up on a blue prison deck list that I think still has a reasonable chance to win the game. We're not trying to lock the opponent out forever. We are trying to lock them out temporarily and then finish the game. And prison decks in general in Legacy are getting worse and worse as threats and answers get better and better. So hopefully this is an okay balance today. If you like anything you see today and you decide you need some Akal Pakals or anything else from this deck list, please consider checking out Tales of Adventure Magic. That is toamagic.com. They will get you everything sent to you in one envelope from one seller with free shipping, and the shipping occurs fast. I am a fantastic fan of their work, and I know some of you have already bought from them using my promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. So thank you very much for doing that and supporting my content. With that being said, let's try to cast back to basics. Uh, let's see. Land, Lotus Petal, Patchwork Automaton, cast Opal, can cast another Opal the following turn, then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go in on this. My deck is, I think, a little bit less than 50% mana, so I'm likely to find one more mana source in two draw steps to keep things going with Urza Saga. And any other artifact also just turns Mox Opal on as a permanent mana source. The opponent is mulliganing aggressively. I don't have anything to pair with the Force of Will right now. They did keep on five. So we're going to patchwork. And I'm fine throwing out one opal now if my opponent wants to randomly prismatic ending that or something like that. That's cool. I don't think I need to play the second one immediately. I might end up getting mana out of it somehow. Now let's reset this. Ah, it's oops all spells. All right, we're dead because we don't have a blue card to pair with this. Yep. All right, uh, we die. My opponent mills their entire library and we get... Uh, Dread returned into Thassa's Oracle off a couple of copies of Narc Amoeba. There's the Narc Amoeba, there's the Thassa's Oracle. I don't see the Dread return just real quick, but they can Cabal Therapy themselves if it is in hand. Uh, I am dead. And this is a matchup where Fairy would be noticeably better than Dread return. We are going to board in a huge chunk of the sideboard here. We're going to board in probably nine cards. Spellbomb and Shadow Spear don't matter in this matchup. Back to basics is a worse lock piece than everything else that's here. And I will need to make three more cuts. It's probably some amount of endgame, and I just assume that I will kill my opponent with a Patchwork Automaton or an Urza Saga reasonably. This is incredibly awkward. I don't have active blue mana. I have a blue card to pair with this. I think I can just do better than this hand. Play Urza Saga. Play Bobble. Play Mox Opal. Play Chalice on zero to shut off my opponent's artifact mana. Mox Opal is on. I have two mana. I play Emery on turn one. Have Urza Saga ticking towards Graveyard Hate. This is sometimes good enough. I'm going to keep it despite the awkwardness. I'm going to go, yeah, Force of Vigor type card will end up being very, very good against me with this current plan. We get blue for Emery. Uh, Emery finds Soul Guide Lantern. That is quite good. We're going to leave this bobble in play. And we're going to see if we're dead. 
Because we can just die to like ritual type things that immediately lead into it. We've shut off fast mana. Cool. A new Mox Opal. That's currently dead. I am going to go ahead and play the Soul Guide Lantern from Graveyard. I do have to choose a target here. And I'll be passing the turn. I don't get to make an Urza Saga token this turn. I can make one next turn. All right, we're chilling. I don't think I'm going to cash in the redraw yet. Force of Will. That is sweet. Let's make a giant token. I think I'm going to put a second graveyard hate card in play. Pithing Needle is also reasonable. I will crash in for one point of damage. My opponent is at 19, 7, 14, 21. I think at this point I am fishing for the blue card. Then it's 6, 12, 18. Ooh, maybe not. Maybe I need one more hit with this in play. Maybe I need one more hit with this in play, and then I fish next turn. Looks like my opponent is just naturally discarding. Getting rid of a pact. Land is not great. So this is seven. Now I'm okay doing this. I know that my opponent has a spirit guide. Do not hit a blue card for force. And we also can't just naturally get to enough mana to hard cast it. The opals are awkward here. Well, this is what happens when you put your chalice on zero to stop an opponent from going off. The third Tarmod script would actually, like, really be legit. Note that if we hit crisis mode, I can just draw a card and attempt to spike a blue card. Here we go. That is a spy. I'll let that resolve. Who are you targeting? Nobody. All right, we did the prison thing there. The game where I'm on the draw is really tough because I opted to play Tormod's Crypts for Artifact Synergies over Fairy. I don't think I'm making any adjustments. Uh, this, is, this is just essentially mono redraws. I, I don't like this. I really need a turn zero play of some kind. Looks like my opponent is mulliganing as well. Uh, I, I think I need, I think I need a force effect. I'm going to go to five looking for that. This is not great. This hopefully gets me through the first turn. Sometimes it doesn't. I think I'm going to keep this one and cross my fingers. I'm unhappy about it. Ooh, I could have gotten away with keeping some of the earlier ones. Mox Opal. Cast, cast, cast. Mox Opal is on. Call Pakal, try to hit a blue card for Force of Negation. That's greedy. I think that's what I'm doing. I could run the numbers on it, but I think I'm just going to do it. Here we go. I think between Akal Pakal and Mishra's Bobble, I hit a blue card enough of the time where I'm comfortable doing this. There's a Dark Ritual. The mana is not going to be the bottleneck in all likelihood. I will put an emery into my hand. This doesn't show it, right? Yeah, it does not show it. I probably aggressively force of negation a dark ritual this turn. And then I like pithing needle under city informer next turn. And then that draws me a new card with this. All right, here we go. And I think I have to take this one out here because I can't counter the follow-up creature with Force of Negation. Fantastic. Oh, Ancient Tomb's not bad. Opponent's at 16. And then we're going to go ahead and shut off Under City Informer. This gives me the artifact entering for a call per call. Force of Vigor pitching a Summoning Pact. Summoner's Pact. Uh, this doesn't make mana right now. Uh, that's a Tormouth Crypt. That's exactly what I want. Uh, hopefully I make it around again. My opponent has two cards, so I'm pretty likely to be okay. Eh. Is your last card a Spirit Guide? Yep. Yeah, so Tormod's Crypt versus Fairy. A very relevant deck building decision. There's Thassa's Oracle. There's Dread Return. Alright. I am dead. GG's.
Today's video is sponsored by topdeck.gg. They're an awesome company that runs an awesome tournament series. If you would like to play for prizes such as Time Twister, check out the Top Deck Championship Series. It's run using their patented Command Tower software, which is awesome for EDH events, although you can use it for anything. Your players can scan QR codes and then get real-time standings and seamless pairings for their event. If you're looking to step up your local tournament game, check them out. Alrighty. I don't have a second mana source for this hand. I don't think I can keep this one. This hand is unexciting, but is probably a keep. We're really going to be living off the top this game in hopes of this hand improving. I don't think I play this this turn. Because if I get wastelanded and I draw a call Pakal, my game plan is better if I have this Lotus Petal still. Uh, Thoughtseize is happening. Underground Sea is a pretty ambiguous opener these days. My opponent opted for the Force of Will rather than the Kappa. That might mean they are combo. I think I'm just going to play a Chalice on one and give up a little bit of Urza's Saga value. This dodges like Dark Ritual into Doomsday or Entomb into Reanimate or Equivalent. Ooh. Uh, this bodes well for me. We're going to go one, two, make an artifact. Got one, two, three. This artifact will be four, five, six. So I get two Kappa this turn no matter what I get. I don't have the game one graveyard hate. I think I'm just going to go redraw accordingly. So, and remember, you can tap these artifacts to pay the cost, so you can kind of use your Lotus Petal twice in these scenarios. So this is, this is what we're trying to do today. We are trying to create a window where we have a chance to win the game with Chalice of the Void, or to a lesser extent, back to basics, and then kill. We have minimal information like, the information that I'm working with is that my opponent selects Force of Will off Thoughtseize instead of Kappa Cannoneer. Like, that probably indicates combo. Could be Graveyard combo, could be not Graveyard combo. My opponent has no real legacy finishes to speak of, so, like, looking them up on a site doesn't yield anything useful. I think I want access to a Graveyard Hate card. And from there, it's a lot harder. I don't know whether or not my back to basics are good. Like, I don't know if my opponent has ritual mana or not. I don't know, like, to what degree they need their resources. I think I'm going to go Shadow Spear out. I think I'm going to keep one Spell Bomb, one Lantern as tutor targets. I don't really want to cut blue cards. Like, I, I want to hit these blue cards. I kind of think I shaved these on the draw still, though. I don't think I get rid of them. They might be good. Their Schrodinger is good. Well, I've got one. I don't, I don't think this hand is quite a keep. Uh, do this, do this, do this. No Metalcraft. Yeah, I think I'm going deeper. I think I'm going to five. Yeah, no, no, this is, this, this fucks. This is, this is what we're here to do. So I think I am keeping these four for sure. Am I just keeping three lock pieces and getting rid of the Emery and find something to kill my opponent later? I think so. I don't yet know what I am playing against and playing around. I assume I lose a Chalice right here, and I am correct. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're in play. I'm going to drop the Mox. I'm probably not getting discarded here like with this in play, but things like grief can still happen. It's also possible that my opponent had a very awkward game and is just like bug. Ooh, we're out here comboing. It's like we're somewhere in the general like TES ballpark. You're just goblinzing. Oh, I guess you can peer. Okay, it's, it's just empty. Um, that's a big enough empty that I probably lose to it. I don't have the shadow spear. Yeah, no, I'm... I'm dead to that. Now I know the matchup. So back to basics is not going to be good here. This can go. The graveyard hate is mid. The Aether Spellbomb is no longer necessary to hedge against Reanimator. 
Hydro Blasts have a small amount of utility for stopping certain spells like Burning Wish here. It also just ups my blue count for Force of Will and stuff. Then I've got two slots left that I can use for some amount of this stuff. Shadow Spear specifically hedges against goblins. I'm going to put that in, and I think just up my blue count by one more. Uh, I'm not into this. Mana's really bad with this hand. This is five. On five, this is a keep. Shadow Spear always goes back. I think very awkwardly I have to not have a threat here. And the goal is to play a Trinisphere on turn two with Force of Will to protect on turn one. Ah, uh, fuck, I should have played Island. Uh, maybe that's not true for if I draw Urza Saga. But I don't have Hydroblast available, but like, what is my opponent going to play on turn one that I want to Hydroblast? Alright, sure. I can get a Bobble under my own Trinisphere here. Don't crack this yet, I don't think. So I will throw this out there. And pass the turn. If my opponent has a Surveil land, they do. Chunka Cabalrit. We'll take a peek. Seen an Opal, which is not a particularly strong card here. Uh, honestly, those are two really good draws. I get two Patchwork Automaton. Oh, no, I don't. I, th I think I am willing to drop the Force of Will for a turn cycle to get my win condition into play. I, I think I am safe adjacent right now. Uh, two? Shut off the wishes. Shut off like Hercules recall type cards too. I think I'm into it. But ow. Uh, ancient, ancient Tomb has real costs. Oh, that's an expensive ponder. You gotta do what you gotta do though, right? Sure. We have... Good prison elements going here. My clock isn't as good as I would like it to be. Uh, yeah, you can have an LED. How do I feel about that? I think I'm fine with this. Like, at some point, this Mox Opal breaks even on life. And it is increasing my clock here. Uh, Lotus Petal is fine. I'm unsure about casting that. I do like one, two, three... I leave up Hardcast Hydroblast. It costs me life. It literally changes the clock on its own. Let's say Reluctant, yes. I, I will just crack immediately this time. We saw the Mox Opal again. Or, alternatively, saw another Mox Opal. A new Trinisphere. That is a Beseech the Mirror. My opponent did not bargain? No artifact here? So this is just a Tutor? Okay. I think I just play Redundant Trinisphere so that a tutor for something that blows up Trinisphere doesn't blow me out. And then I think I just force of will my opponent's relevant play. We'll see if I got too greedy not countering the Beseech. But it's pretty hard to thought seize me into another relevant card here. Yeah. Let's attempt to put lethal on the stack. That is a Boseju. Sure. You have to pay the ward. That's happening. I'll pull an island out of deck. I think I can comfortably do this. I will draw immediately. There is a Dark Ritual, which is not particularly strong right now. Hey, there's a new win condition. And we're chilling. This is uh, altogether too many Ancient Tombs. I think my life total matters enough that I don't leave up blue, blue, or force of will here. Or brainstorm is fine. So you've got another land, four, five, six, theoretical nine mana. I can't die to a just low storm count tendrils. Uh, Lotus petal happens. Emery is interesting. Emery changes the clock to a one turn clock. But if I play Emery, I no longer have... Oh, do I have Force of Will Hydroblast available? If I play Emery for three mana, probably not, right? I go one, two, three. Yeah, I can only tap Ancient Tombs two more times this entire game. I think I'm going to put Lethal on board. Um, this one's definitely awkward, though. So this is a Dark Ritual. If I counter this, I go to five. My opponent has three starting mana. 
The Dark Ritual does not net mana. Or sorry, I have to go to four to do this. Which means I would just die to Tendrils. So I let this one go. But I probably counter the next thing that goes on the stack. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's awkward. Now it's just Burning Wish that ignores Chalice. Crack this. And Tendrils me. Yeah, so if I didn't play the Emery, I could, in theory, have Veiled and then Hydroblasted. What's my next draw? My next draw is Patchwork Automaton. Would not have been another blue card. Oh, that was a great game of Magic. Today's video is sponsored by Voxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. I am looking at kind of a middling opening hand here where I am like just hoping to play a turn two Akal Pakal and like ride that to value town. I think I have stronger opening hands with like chalices and emeries. What if we just played turn two Akal Pakal anyway though? What if we did that though? It might still be happening. Reluctant keep. Is my opponent true to their username and playing Maverick? Stomping ground. You have my attention. Turn one, a call, a call, or just Emery. Maybe I just Emery for one mana, and we can do that after playing out both of these without having to give up a Lotus Petal. Oh, that's a great amount of fuel. I don't want to pitch this to Force of Will. Like I really want to cast this card. My guess is that my opponent is playing some sort of like crop rotation Field of the Dead style deck. My mind has changed. This is like Jund Death Shadow? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Shadow Spear is real good. I think I think if I suspect I'm going to be playing against Death Shadow, like the sh getting the Shadow Spear back for Urza Saga tokens is kind of huge. Uh smells like Death Shadow. Mawlock. Uh we, we've still got Urza Saga. We're not out of this. But I don't have card advantage now. Oh. My bones. They hurt. Okay. I'm going to take two here. This is a lot of small bodies. I wonder if there's something like Hogak in here too. Like, I don't know. Just, jeez. I'm not 100% sure if it's actually correct to wasteland that land. All right, uh, it is Death Shadow. Uh, I'm just going to get run over here. This is not great in the face of that. I take two, three, four, five ish damage. I think the scales have tipped enough that I'm just going to concede. My opponent probably collector oofs, which is like not the best for me. Back to basics is probably good here. Chalice is probably bad here. I think I'm going to Brazen Borrower to get creatures out of play. I think I'm going to Hydroblast. That might be it. Pulling ahead and then slamming a back to basics and denying a couple of my opponent's lands legitimately seems good here. We'll see how my shell feels versus Bowmasters, though. Like, I hedged against it a little bit, but we still do have eight bobbles. This is just... Straight aggro hand. This is a very strong six card hand that I am going to keep. There is some question about how many artifacts I play on turn one for the purposes of Patchwork Automaton. Because every artifact that I save scales up multiple cards. So I think I am just going to play a naked Patchwork Automaton and not play another card. And then play second Patchwork and go Bobble Opal from there. My opponent is also on five cards right now. That's fine. Ooh, I get to untap with it? Fuck yeah. I think I'm going to try to bait my opponent into instantly wastelanding this Urza Saga. Okay, they don't. Am I a call calling? Nah. I'll do that later. Let's just scale up. We're looking to go wide of a single removal spell here, and keeping a call-pa-call in hand lets me always force of will. 
which seems sick. I think I will be instantly cracking the bobble before Bowmasters can come down. Is this worth forcing? This is a little weird. Because if I force my opponent, like, Wastelands anyway... I don't know, I guess this protects two mana sources. It's possible I just, like, force something more proactive, though. Like, I can go down to zero mana sources and still almost have a two-turn clock. Let's look at the top card of my library. I'm going to draw a Patchwork Automaton. So if I Force of Will, my opponent wastelands this, and then I cast a Patchwork Automaton and Guaranteed Scale both of these up, I think that's fine. So my opponent's at 16, and... I am swinging for half of their life total on this next attack. And they presumably have to take out the Urza Saga. They take it out out of spite before conceding. They were on a mold of five, and my hand was strong. I think I'm just whacking submit. Um, this hand looks like it's going to be a keep. We'll figure out what it does later. Oh, it's just shocking in. Uh, Ancient Tomb, Patchwork Automaton, Lotus Petal... Mox, Opal, Emery, Shadow Spear? Okay. Seems reasonable and fair. Yeah. Let's just always yield to that guy. Scale up. Cast the Emery. I think it is fine to just play the Shadow Spear. I will still have Metalcraft for Mox Opal immediately. Pretty decent turn one. Note that this is a cast. Ugh. That is a costly dismember. And I have Shadow Spear to help out for if my opponent drops something like a Death's Shadow. They are shocking. It is Death's Shadow with one mana floating, oddly. Second one? Sure. So, yaw. 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 Going in is a little weird. I think I just wait. Like, I think it's worth equipping for mana reasons, but I think I just wait till I can kill my opponent in one shot. Oh, yeah. Brazen Borrower is exactly the sort of thing I'm looking for here. That was literally the card I had in mind of drawing. Damn it! <laughs> That's so inconvenient. When it goes down to eight. Uh, oof's really bad. Oof's really, really bad. Urza Saga is great, though. Yeah, I think I'm chilling. The one-two punch of... That Thoughtseize into the oof was really bad. Kessig Wolf Run? I find it difficult to believe that that's a good idea in this three-color sketchy mana base, but it sure is neat here. So Ancient Tomb taps for one mana, uh, which is highly inconvenient right now. They don't get my Urza Saga tokens because this isn't a land. That is functional. Yep. But a call pa call triggers. I'll take this one. Not currently functional. Break out. Okay, this is this is the gimmick. I understand now. It's not small creatures for Hogak, it's small creatures for breakout. Alright, interesting. Um, this is bad. I am going to lose to that. Why oh, float a mana? Don't have pithing needle. So I'll pick up some artifact. I think this is worth the life to do. And I have to hope that a call call can scale faster than Fiend Artisan, which I just don't believe is a thing that is going to happen. My opponent's draw just like really lined up well versus mine. Uh, we're chilling. Huh. So Ancient Tomb does not currently tap for two mana, but this is like surprisingly neat here. Patchworks get bigger. This can be annoying. I guess it's only plus one. Um, the trample death shadow trading stuff is really weird right now. I'm looking for my other brazen borrower. Ancient Tomb versus Hydroblast. Hydroblast has like very real text versus things like Moloch. A little awkward to hold it up. I also maybe bleed myself to death too quickly if I Ancient Tomb. Not gonna take it. Bogs whatever at this point. Like, it's, it's relevant, but I'm not hyper scared of that. Well, we found another Ancient Tomb anyway. 
Am I into back to basics? I think not yet. I think I hold up Hydroblast. Like, I think I just want to be able to counter a breakout. Got it. What a weird game of magic. Force of Will is kind of mid. What about now? Now that my opponent has two lands tapped. Bucket. All right. Yeah. All right. I have trade two of my lands for two of your lands. Unclear whether or not this is good. It makes like Brazen Borrower worse. That Verdant Catacombs doesn't untap. Hello, seat. <laughs> this does trigger um, a call per call. I'll take. Uh, oh, that's tough because like Lotus Petal is a redraw and scaling for both of the patchworks. I think I'm just going to take Force of Will as a safety net for something that breaks this game open, though. I just have a pair of Kappa Cannoneers that I can draw that end the game in a single turn. I'm not really sure like why this wasn't activated earlier in the game. Like it makes sense now. Get bigger friends. I'm not really there yet. I might end up nearing the point where I can alpha in successfully. Uh, Brazen Borrower. I am going to need mana to cast that. But Brazen Borrower bouncing a collector oof out of play probably just instantly ends this game. Emery. Emery is sweet. Oh, there's a Kappa Cannoneer. Oh, we're getting some end of turn movement. The basic land. My opponent notably does not have natural green green to hard cast something like a Force of Vigor. Now they do. These are 8 8s. A dismember on the Emery. My opponent is at three. The Death Shadows are 10 tens. I think I now ignore Brazen Borrower and just Force of Will pitching this, leave a Force of Will in hand. Um, that's a little tricky. I, I think I really like drawing that Kappa Cannoneer, or uh, effectively drawing that Kappa Cannoneer. So Emery, target Kappa. Yaw, 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 yaw. The Kappa is unblockable next turn in all likelihood. Yeah, I think we'll just pass. And then I'd like to find any blue card here. A blue card. Now we've got Force of Will backing this up. And I can Emery a Lotus Petal or whatever out of the graveyard to make this unblockable. All right, so... I have, in theory, 11 lifelink that is happening here. I'm going to throw that in front of a Death Shadow. I will put another blocker in front of here to absorb some amount of damage. It's possible that it's correct to throw two bodies in front of here. I think, in fact, I will do so. I, I, I think this combination just wins the game if I don't accidentally die this exact turn. All right, we've got some Trample. But I end up ahead on life, and I just have Lotus Petal, Kappa Cannoneer, Unblockable, win. Cast it. Hey, there, remember when I was talking about, like, Force of Vigor and my opponent not immediately having green green for it? Turns out it was super relevant. Uh, GG's. That was, that was a wild match. Okay, I think this one is a keep. So I vomit artifacts into play. I do a turn one Emery, turn two Kappa, and Bobble. Uh, this player usually is on, like, show-and-tell type decks. It's possible I am supposed to, having that information, just triple cycle for Force of Will immediately. Sorry if you're getting some motorcycle noise. Yaw. Double bobble. Emery. Now this is all kind of whatever. So next turn I have three, four, five, six with all of the bobbles. Actually, I guess I can do one redraw right now safely because Emery can just replay one bobble. Let's look at a random card in your hand. Volcanic Island. Got it. Patchwork Automaton is kind of whatever here. Uh, opponent's just passing the turn. I get to do both. Play Patches. Play Opal. One, two, three, four, five, six off Emery. Yes. F yeah. I'll opal, scale this up, get a bobble, play a bobble, play kappa, and if I don't immediately die, this is pretty cool. Force, 
Pitching intuition. Okay, so the, the general show and tell vibes were correct. I can take a bunch of redraws for counter magic. I can replay Kappa from graveyard. Ripping a back to basics is probably slow. Oh, sweet. Seems legitimately good here. Back to basics in a world of surveil lands. Uh, maybe there's something there. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't attack. Redraw three times. Alternatively, I can just redraw four times and cap a later. I think I'm into more redraws. So scale up. Attack for five. And then crack all four of these. There's a sneak attack over there. <laughs> There's an Emrakul over there. All right, so we know about Sneak Attack and Amrakul only. Four redraws. We're looking for Force of Will plus blue card, ideally. You know, four mana sources, though. That's, like, very close to what I asked for. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to put in Island. There is an Emrakul. I don't necessarily lose to that. One, two, three, four, five, six... I always die in two hits. All right. So let's Kappa. Play Kappa. Improvise, since I can't really attack through it this turn. And we start scaling up. Keep this Mox Opal. Put a Chalice on one. So cantrips are not live. At least not immediately. The goal is to be able to attack for 13 next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep one artifact in hand uh, for unblockable. I am at 16. I don't die in one hit. I die if my opponent can sneak attack activate. Yeah, there's a small um, argument to put a chalice on zero because of sneak attack plus activate. But then it, like, it becomes harder for me to unblockable the following turn. Uh, this is theoretical lethal. I think the Emery can go. One, two, three, four, five. I think I keep this and keep the artifact land. Six. I'm at one. And this might just be like sneak attack past the turn with the ability to put a blocker into play. Oh, <laughs> oh. Oh, that protection from everything is real good here. That gives my opponent the fog they need to make it another turn. Uh, because otherwise this is lethal. Uh, GG's. This is fine. This is fine. Raisin Borrower has text. I don't know if I'm excited about it. Turnisphere has text. I don't know if I'm excited about it. I am excited about Pithing Needle. So basically, how do I feel about these? I think both are medium. Chalice does not stop the things that actually kill me. It just stops cantrips. So am I more interested in Back to Basics as Time Walk or Chalice of the Void to make hands clunkier? I think given that I want to board in a handful of one drops, I think I go Chalice out, keep Back to Basics in, and call this good. It, it's weird that like Chalice and Trinisphere are just like innately not good versus show and tell and sneak attack despite being the generic anti-combo artifacts of choice, or just general prison pieces of choice. So turn one, Patchwork Automaton, double play, crack immediately with Force of Will. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Generally speaking, I think Ancient Tomb decks are quite unfavored versus show and tell. Long ago, it used to be that like the Ensnaring Bridge style decks were just highly favored, but like, for reasons that we were talking about earlier. Uh, the ensnaring bridge stuff doesn't make as much sense as it used to. I'd like some good redraws here. I don't have blue mana yet. Still don't have blue mana. I have a couple more redraws if I need them. But I would love to naturally spike blue mana here. I am unsure if I cast Aether Spellbomb if I don't have anything else to do with my mana. This is, like, very close to being insane. I'm going to cast this, always. What do you got over there? Okay, we know show and tell is happening. I don't know whether or not my opponent has a counter spell. I can uncounterably put in Aether Spellbomb, but I can't actually crack it with blue to bounce a creature. 
So given that, I think I take the two to cast this and just immediately cycle it, looking for a blue land, which I did not find. I get to attack for five, plus a redraw. That's good. So we fight over this. I imagine that I lose the fight. Oh, fuck, I won the fight. Uh, I'm going to try to slam back to basics. Like, I have a two-turn clock in play. Like, th this is exactly the back to basics that I thought about in the intro, right? That just kills my opponent in two turns. Or that, like... Yeah, like, this is just time walk, so I get another attack step. Uh, and we'll Emery here as well. Hello and good luck. Back to basics as time walk confirmed. Uh, we are really lucky that my opponent did not have uh, days or whatever to back up their show and tell. So I have decent counter magic this time and bad mana. So if I keep this, I'm going Island, Lotus Petal, Patchwork, Pass without the ability to scale this up more. I have two counter spells. I think I can do as well as this or better than this with a mulligan. Awkward. Very awkward. I don't know that this one wins. So this is the defensive plan. This is the annoying thing I do. If that gets countered, I do this. I am not excited about this. And I can't use force of negation to back up back to basics. Like, it's possible this ends up being my pitch card. I don't know that it makes sense to go to five. I, I think I'm just going to hope for a zero-cost artifact off the top that lets me put Emery into play. Uh, I guess that's a Lotus Petal. So this is two mana towards Emery, but is not ideal. I'm just playing Island Pass. The hope is that my opponent spends their turn just double cantripping, and then I force them to use a counterspell and back to basics so my force of negation is more likely to resolve, and then I play an Urza Saga game. But uh, yeah, awkward. What if we had second back to basics, though? What if? All right, we're in play. I have traded a mana source for a mana source. My opponent's cantrips are noticeably worse. I now have a second back to basics for force of negation. I let that happen. Veil of Summer's awkward. I will attempt to counter. Everything works. I think I start ticking an Urza's Saga towards a Pithing Needle right now. Oh, I don't, I don't control any artifacts. Wild. Okay. All right. All those lands are tapped. We are doing the prison thingy. Am I making a construct? I think I'm making a construct. I think that just wins me the game faster than Emery. Back to basics, doing some work against the mana base greed. Spell bomb. Ithing needle. Sneak attack. Play seat. Play Emery. I think this is fine to just do immediately and hit for the highest amount of damage. Like, I can play this turn slightly safer, not play Emery, and hold up a spell bomb activation. But I'm not expecting to have to activate it immediately since Pithing Needle is in play already. Uh, like, we're, we're afraid of show and tell. Uh, cool. What's in Graveyard? Just Mox Opal. I could crack this to draw a card immediately and then replay with Emery. I don't think I am going to do that, though. I think I'm just going to go, yaw, yaw, target the Mox Opal. Cast the Mox Opal. This gives me 7 this turn and 8 next turn. Uh, this is theoretical lethal. Alright. 8 on board. I guess show me a weirdo flash creature. I guess there's other removal spells. A braid on the token. That occurs. It costs a Lotus Petal and an Ancient Tomb. Like, that is a very relevant amount of resources. I think I leave this chilling in play. You're not an alien artifact yourself. I maybe draw a card with Spell Bomb at end of turn, though. And then replay it from Graveyard rather than attacking for one with Emery. Nice. Kind of. I think nice. Yeah, so let's just immediately recast that. Play Saga. And pass. 
We are playing prison now. <laughs> oh, the surveil land. My opponent got rid of show and tell. Um, two mana activate, one mana still hold up spell bomb. I think I'm just good. A bobble. Sure. Cast. Activate. Arcane artisan. Got it. Drop this. And bounce the artisan out of play. I'm just going to take another redraw here. See what we're working with. Hey, it's that same arcane artisan. Fancy that. You get Bobble and Patchwork Automaton from the redraws. Turn 10, back to basics, win. GG. All right, um, this hand's pretty sweet. It's going to do kind of an 8-cast style thing. Am I on the draw? I am on the draw. Grief would be really awkward, because Grief could, like, cut me off my most relevant stuff. Huh. Huh. Okay. Uh, let's do some stuff. Storm is three. Yaw. Immediate Emery, for sure. I don't know what my opponent is playing yet off of just Flooded Strand. Kappa Cannoneer. One, two, three, four... We're still a decent ways away from that. I think I'm just double bobbling. Lorien revealed. I need more info. Force of negation. That doesn't quite give me what I need yet. So what I'm wondering, is my opponent like three to five color beans, in which case his back to basics is awesome, or are they like a blue-white X deck, in which case they are just going to have a bunch of basics and this back to basics does nothing? I think I am force of willing pitching force of will, not knowing the answer to this question. There is an argument to keep the other force of will so that I can draw a blue card and have another layer of protection for the Emery. But I think the back to basics just cheeses the game some portion of the time. And I think I'm into it. All right. So the force negation and Lorien revealed that we know about are gone. But we got this. One of the scary things here is that I don't yet know whether or not my opponent is on Leyline Binding, and we'll just have a clean answer to this. We'll see. I think my opponent is currently favored, but this game could swing wildly in the next two turn cycles in either direction. Eh, don't like seeing that. That's an indicator that more basics are to come, and this is just like not going to, damn it, steal the game in the way that I want it to. The ward here is nice. Let's see what's going on. Ah! Oh! Looks like blue-white miracles. In which case, my back to basics is a board out. Oh! 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 That's so fucking lucky. Holy shit. Ooh, no, it is banned. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, just, just spend your turn cantripping. Just cantrip. Nothing bad will happen, I promise. All right, Portent targeting themselves. So this is presumably Bant, uh, Triumph of St. Catherine. Portent is sweet. I guess I should zoom in on this one. Some of you Zoomers might not know this card. Back in my day, we played this card and we liked it. You miracle -in? Damn it. I can maybe just outscale this 5-5 lifelinker. I don't do it immediately. Um, it's a shame that I can't slam this back to basics this turn. I have to pass the turn here. Yeah, with a blue source, like if I just draw an island or any other non-Mox Opal zero-cost artifact, I will slam the back to basics into their 5-5 lifelinker and be perfectly fine with it. Um, this, uh, this hurts, obviously. Like, this, this card on turn three is very good. Beans are happening. Surveil lands into my back to basics. It's tasty. They did top their card though. The universe has a cruel sense of humor. 21. So the back to basics are certainly staying in. You're just gonna cast another one. Oh. All right, all right. Yeah, back to basics is insane. Hydroblast is playable. Brazen Borrower is a bounce spell. Soul Guide Lantern is a card that I could slot in. I don't know that I'm excited about Chalice. 
Chalice stops Swords to Plowshares, and I guess it also stops the Cantrips. Uh, maybe it's fine. If I keep these in, I don't board this in, though. I think I have to play both of these. I think I just need more outs to the 5-5. Five five. Am I going for maximum threat density? And I just, like, make my opponent counter a bunch of shit and cheese the game with back to basics? I don't think I want to two-for-one myself against this opponent for the most part. Like, I can just play two Trinospheres and make the portents setting up Kathy worse. Trinosphere, like, leading into back to basics is maybe stronger than I initially gave it credit for. Like, just kind of thinking about that interaction, like, you force your opponent to pay three and then you jam the back to basics. Maybe, maybe there is a build of this where I, like, drift away from Mox Opal, play four more islands, and try to lean into that more. I don't know, like, as soon as I take out those four seats, like, Mox Opal and Urza Saga get worse. One, two, three, four, five, six. This just plays turn two Kappa Cannoneer. This is not the way that I want this hand to look. I think I'm keeping it. Ancient Tomb on one, Urza Saga on two. One, two, three, four, five, six, sack one Lotus Petal. All right. Weird opener. Wasteland's pretty damn good against this. Surveil land. Getting rid of Prismatic Ending, which is a perfectly reasonable card against my deck. So I think I play both Lotus Petals first just to make sure they resolve. Then we drop Bobble and Saga. I do have to sack one Lotus Petal for blue. This is a very good force of will for my opponent. Otherwise, this is an incredibly strong position for me. Because I have Saga to create stuff. And this has Ward 4, so it's not getting answered by something outside of like Terminus and Supreme Verdict in the next couple of turns. Two mana. Uh, Lavinia. That is a good card. Like, it counters my zero drop stuff, but like, it's just the wrong time for it. We're going to go Yaw. I'm going to make myself worse versus Terminus, but significantly better versus single target removal. Patchwork Automaton in Yard. I'm going to attack. I, I actually think I'm going to make this now and not give my opponent the chance to gain 5 or 6 life with a block. My opponent goes to 14. There is a Prismatic Ending over there. So making my token at instant speed also plays into ending a little bit. My Emery's not great anyway, so like throwing that into a potential Supreme Verdict or whatever is not really the end of the world. With Lavinia in play, I don't know, I guess in my opponent Verdicts I can have the Emery afterwards and then the Lavinia isn't there to shut off my ability to cast zero drops from Graveyard. My opponent is paying a green mana for something right now. Do they have like a pick your, is pick your poison? No, it is cycling. Or Valk. So this could be setting up a Terminus. I'm hoping to just be swinging lethal. Uh, Shadow Spear is out. Shadow Spear is in. Nice. Pyroblast the Emery. Sure. I'm super happy to trade Emery. Like, Emery is, is not actively doing anything right now with the Lavinia in play. Hey, new Emery. So, do this. Trigger Kappa. So if I put Shadow Spear into play, this is a 5-5. Five five. I equip it, it's a 6-6. Six six. Can't quite kill my opponent. I could instead take a redraw. I could get Aether Spellbomb and potentially bounce Kappa Cannoneer back to my hand. I think I'm into maximizing damage right now. So yeah, yeah. This leaves my opponent at 2. And then I potentially eat a Terminus. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, notably, I can't play the Chalice for zero uh, to get to lethal because of the Lavinia. Oh, it's Kathy. That is not a problem. I just have lethal through that with Kappa Cannoneer, assuming that Chalice of the Void resolves. So my opponent needs a counter. Oh, or there's that. <laughs> uh, so we have lethal a couple different ways. Let's start with the Chalice on one. Uh, <laughs> nice. Can I get one more Trinosphere in here somehow? Is Trinosphere better than Chalice? Am I supposed to have the Shadow Spear in the deck? That's another thing. Like, I, I actively wanted it this game. I don't know that that's the norm. It's, like, kind of bad in terms of a Mana Sync, especially if I am trying to back to basics. I think I'm going to do this. 
Uh, so my mana's not perfect here. But I have patchwork, double grow on turn one, and multiple looks at a call, like mana for a call, a call. I think I keep this. This is like, these hands aren't conceptually going the way that I'm trying to draw up the matchup. I, I think I just live with that though. Beautiful. So we patchwork. Nice. Gonna grow twice, and I believe I just crack. I think I crack both immediately. Like, you can keep the argument that I'm supposed to keep one to, like, a call, pacal, and there's a swords over there, and a Lorien revealed. Uh, to a call, a call, pacal, and immediately trigger it next turn. I think I'm fine just going turbo, though. All right, so my opponent cycles the Lorien revealed, so they don't have the swords. Let's do my redraws. A little heavier on the creatures than I would like. Because conceptually, I would love to just play single threat at a time and not expose more than is necessary to a Terminus or Supreme Verdict. But you know, that's not where we're at. Cast this. We're in play. And then we're going to scale this up twice and attack for five. I don't think I go for six damage this turn. I guess I can take a look at a card over there. A brainstorm, sure. I, I think I'm just going to hold up the Lotus Petal. 15? Uh, that's tough. I think I'm just into the Trinosphere. The Bobble is immediately stronger. I think the Trinosphere is better if things start going wrong. <laughs> this is insane. Let's draw a Soul Land. So I can just play Trinosphere into back to basics. My opponent taps this Tundra. I like maybe just play back to basics despite the fact that I have multiple three drops in my hand. Brainstorm into land drop. Into stony silence. You got it, boss. I, I think I slam back to basics. If my opponent doesn't have force of will, I, I think they are just dead. I don't think I can risk Kathy coming into play here. Show me Force of Will. They showed me Force of Will. It's possible that I just disrupted a Terminus or a Cathy or whatever. I'm going to do this because it'll trigger a Call Pacal. I bash in for six of this. My opponent's at eight. Another back to basics? Don't mind if I do, actually. Cool. We dodge a Miracle. Supreme Verdict could be spooky. It is just Swords paying the full price here. Which is, like, obviously good. I, I think I just slam back to basics again. Mox Opal is reasonable. It does trigger this. Send it. My opponent's at 7. What if I Brazen Borrower bounce Stony Silence? I float 1 colorless, and then I go 1, 2, 3, play back to basics afterwards. I'm into it. Alright, it's out of play. Let's reattempt back to basics. <laughs> my opponent has said that's mean that's the plan fuck yeah so now we can use a call pacal to either find a better threat or another basic island or whatever a uh, chalice is great i'll happily take a chalice to put a chalice on one to protect this so force of vigor is one of the scariest things my opponent says i was just feeling happy about my situation Sorry, I have snatched your happiness away. Solitude is also, ooh, beautiful. I think Trinosphere is better than Chalice of the Void right now. Trinosphere just shuts off all the Force of Will type effects, and I don't think that my opponent has a removal spell, or a counter spell rather, because back to basics resolved. It would have to be the card that they drew for their draw step. Ah! I mean, situation is still fine, right? Like, I don't trigger this this turn, but, like, I have a, I have a five-turn clock and a source of card advantage in play. A very... St <laughs> Suck it, surveil lands. Patchwork Automaton. Not bad. I have four potential mana this turn. I think I like Patchwork Automaton into Chalice on one. Despite the awkwardness with Aether Spellbomb that that poses. So there's Aggro Creature... There's shutting off the one drops. Uh, yeah, I'll take another patchwork. There's there's definitely something here. I don't know that I quite nailed it. We have gotten the GGs from our opponent. 
They did finally find a basic. And they cast a celebratory brainstorm after doing so. So that's a 3-2 finish for this brew. So I think in the second half of this league, Back to Basics was an MVP. It was very gross versus my opponents who were trying to eke extra value out of Surveil Lands. And the metagame is just full of a lot of three to five color decks anyway, with various like Beans, Leyline, uh, Binding, uh, Leyline of the Guild Pack decks running around. I, I think Back to Basics might actually be a real card right now. I don't know that this is the home for it. Like, obviously, there's some tension in deck building here. But I think if you are a fair blue mage and you're looking for a reason, like, why do I want to be in, like, blue-white? I think this is your reason. And if you're a crazy person and you, like, play some deck like Merfolk, like, maybe you can get a little spicy. A call, Pakal slapped during this league. Uh, we got so much card advantage off of him. Yeah, he looks like some sort of Emperor Duder. Uh, off of him and like coupling it with emery is a really cool engine I, I think there is room to refine this into something that is competitive and i don't mean by like removing the back to basics what do i take away from this like maybe you can play some sort of like mono blue delver style deck list with 4x main deck back to basics like back to basics where you're using your creatures to bait out your opponents early counter magic and then you slam back to basics on turn three after like playing a delver in a merktide region or whatever all right the curve couldn't be quite that aggressive but like general point there i i think we learned that back to basics is horrifying in legacy right now again i don't think this is a perfect shell i'm not sure on like torment's crypt versus fairy split like we talked about that in round one already um but i'm gonna i'm gonna give this one a a thumbs up i think this was a a sweet brew of a blue prison or blue prison adjacent deck list but like we're not doing that traditional drag the game on as pos as, as long as possible this is this is just my my three mana win the game card and there's enough other stuff that's threatening here that demands counter spells and removal spells and interaction that like this sticks a decent portion of the time the damage that it did to us was always less than the damage that it did to our opponents. Now, occasionally, like you'll play against mono white death and taxes with a whole bunch of basic planes or whatever. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this deck a, a thumbs up. I'm really happy with how this one, and I hope my anonymous donor as well as Isaac enjoyed seeing this card in action. I think this was sweet. And should you find yourself needing some copies of a call, a call, back to basics, or anything else from some of the new sets, check out TalesOfAdventureMagic.com. Use promo code THRABENU to save five percent on your order and get fast shipping. Folks, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. I'm going to go record a podcast. See ya!